Hello. Thank you for tuning in. You are tuned in to The Encourager. And my name is Nehru. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in. Subscribers, new listeners, wherever you find your place at this time in the grandiose world that we are in. Right? This 3D place. Um, hopefully you are bringing heaven and earth together and becoming your highest, truest version of yourself. And uh, it's definitely about time I get another cap. I've had this cap for uh, before. Uh, yeah, I've had this cap for, for quite a while. So it's probably time I get another one. <laughs> um, and I actually got rid of all the other ones when I, when I relocated uh, in August. So got to get some other ones. But anyway, um, I had a dream uh, last night, and I wanted to share that with you. Today is a it's a beautiful day outside, uh, at least where I am. <laughs> uh, hopefully, where you are too. Even if there's snow on the ground, or you're deal dealing with, you know, challenging weather and that sort of thing, we're obviously in the thick of it for most of America. Um, and uh, and as far as winter is concerned, um, but if I could switch this around. Uh, let me see. Uh, I guess not. I thought I was able to switch this around for some reason. I'm sure I can. I'm probably not seeing it where to do that at. Um, as this is a new phone. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I wanted to come on and share the dream with you. Uh, it's not a very long dream, but certainly meaningful. I don't... Uh, to be honest with you, I don't have complete clarity on what it means for me yet. So, uh, yeah. So anyway, we're, uh, myself, um, a, a female, she was young, so she's a girl. Um, and then there was a female woman, and then there was another male. And I'm standing behind what looks like to be the couch. And I'm kind of... You know, most dreams when you are an observer and you are meant to 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 be a messenger of some sort, often you view these dreams, your position of these dreams from your vantage point is either from above, like you're watching, right, as the angel hovering or or fly on the wall, right? You're hovering, okay? Uh, or you know, you're you're watching. You're not involved in the activity, and I wasn't involved in the activity. So that's an indication that you are being an observer and this is something for you to witness. And, uh, and so there was some talking going on and the gentleman, he was standing up. Yeah, I think he was already standing up when the dream started, when I started to see the dream, okay? Uh, and he was talking and then... I saw him pull out a gun, okay? And he pulled out a gun and he raised it up and he raised it to this girl's head, this little, this, this, this child female's head, okay? And he pulled the trigger. And I was sitting there thinking, as I'm watching this, again, you know, as like a movie, I'm sitting there watching this, I'm like, no, no. And the woman, the woman doesn't, she doesn't physically do anything until after, okay? Which is, extremely unfortunate and dumb foolish whatever all on her part all all of the whatever words you want to use it's all that on her part <laughs> uh, but she didn't say anything until after uh, the girl was shot and she was shot in the head so the guy is standing in front of the couch he has this gun he pulls out this gun and he kind of turns sideways and he just lifts it up and he just points it at this girl and he just pulls the trigger. And she falls forward off the couch and onto the floor, onto on her face, on her stomach, right on forward. OK. And so. Then the woman decides, sorry, I'm not used to having my face on the camera, so I look everywhere. I whatever. Right. Um, she. Then gets up and like gets on her knees and and says no 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 and she's like begging him and like why did you do that and blah 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 right and um so 
there is a threat. And that threat is trying to take the next generation. So what's the next generation? Well, the next generation is just like our generation, my generation, right? I was born in 74, right? 404, 11. Uh, I was born in 74. Um, I have 11s all over. I was born in the 11th month. The date of my birth is actually an 11 also. It adds up to 11. Like, it's 11's like, it's insane. It's crazy. So, there's some synchronicity. <laughs> um, and so... Um, there is a spirit a demonic spirit that is attempting to take the next generation now this is no big news this is no anything right the timing of it however is critical and the timing of it is critical because we are now in the age of eight the year of eight that is new beginnings um and with that new beginning um there is a promise but the promise one of the challenges that I have with this spiritual journey is me never being willing to put down my sword. Okay, look at my shirt. Okay. Um, one, of, one of my challenges with this journey here in the 3D, um, and it's a challenge for me like it's a challenge for you as an earth angel, an unconditional love healer that I have that I am and that love that I have for all of mankind it doesn't matter that's why I always mention cases that go decades without anything right I'm thinking of another one this one's overseas her name is I think it happened in 86 her name is Susie Lampla Lampla yeah L A M P. L-U-G-H, I believe is how you spell her name. But her first name is S-U-Z-Y. At least that's how it's spelled in, in everything that, that I've seen. Okay? So, um, and I mentioned the cases, these, these things. <laughs> I'm not a private investigator. I mentioned these, but at least not licensed, like, like licensed by man, right? I did, however, go to, I did enroll in school to get my private investigation license when the sperm donor left the state with my daughter back in 2005. I did enroll in a, a private investigation class in order to get skills, gain knowledge to find out where the hell my daughter was at that time. Okay? So, um, I have an investigative nature. I always, I want to understand the reason why the process even exists. And that's a lot of me and most highs conversations today. So if this is one of your systems in place and you want us to abide by this, what is the purpose for us doing it like this? Why? What's, what's that for? What's this for? And if it's not, then we need to eliminate it. Right? We need to eliminate it. Okay? Anything that's no longer serving your good, anyone that's no longer serving your good, you need to eliminate them. Okay? Because if you don't, it's going to continue to get uncomfortable and it's not going to just stay uncomfortable. It's going to get unrelentingly more uncomfortable. I don't even know if unrelentingly is a word, but it's going to be relentlessly uncomfortable and it's just going to get worse and it's going to get worse and it's going to get worse, right? If you're religious, you will stay stagnant, okay? You will just stay in the same place. You're a hamster on a wheel, okay? My lips look dry. <laughs> You're a hamster on a wheel. Okay? So. The generation that's... I, I, what I... Words came to mind was up for grabs. That's really bad. The, the generation that looks to be up for grabs is now being threatened. Because... If the generation that I am, right? If the generation, and I don't go by generation X is this, generation Y is this, baby boomers, I don't go by all that shit. That doesn't mean anything to me. Everybody is individual. And there are 
almost 8 billion individual spirits on this planet right now. Souls on this planet right now. And they all have a different mission, even though they're all linked. Okay? The steering wheel don't does not do what the wheels do, and the wheels do not do what the engine does. And the engine doesn't do what the transmission does, but it all works together to get us to where we need to be. Does that make sense? There's an analogy. I've dated women who didn't like analogies. I use them all the time. Military, I use analogies all the time. Acronyms, I do all the time. And apologize for who I am. I don't talk to them anymore, needless to say. So, um, when considering the generation that's upcoming. So I'm in my late 40s, right? I, I say I started early, right? My daughters are they're in their 20s. Okay. So most of us, however, like uh, let's take the family that I consider to be closest to me, right? Um, him, right? We've known each other since we were 16. Um, they have uh, their son just turned uh, 12. Okay, my daughters are twice that age. Okay, so we're all at different places and times in our journey. In fact, my daughters are 26. They're a little more than twice that age. Um, and so with that, what are we doing to protect the next generation? We can only protect the next generation if we ourselves are enlightened. We can't do that if we are not enlightened ourselves. Okay? You cannot protect anyone if you yourself do not know how to first protect yourself. Okay? The military teaches you that even on a plane, they teach you. I just saw this. On a plane, they teach you, put on your gas mask first. Yours first. Yours first. Don't try to save someone else and your ass drowning. What are you doing? Come on, learn how to swim first and then become a lifeguard. Okay? So, the only way that we can, again, I'm not used to looking at the camp, so I look everywhere. I apologize. So, the only way, and yes, the only way, that we can assure at least our portion of the next generation. What's our portion? Our portion is that that we are responsible for today, and that's our children, right? If your children are still under your authority, if they're not, then they're no longer your responsibility, and they are at the age of accountability or beyond, and they're responsible for themselves, okay? All right, so stop trying to parent them and become an advisor, because your job is not to parent your 25, 30, 40, 50 year old. It's not your job. Okay? It's not. Unless they are disabled in some way. They're handicapped in some way and they need that type of assistance, right? Otherwise, your job is not to tell your 40 something, 50 something, 60 something daughter what to do. That's not your fucking job. All right? Sit sit down. Okay? Mother, father, sit down. That's not your job anymore. You had 18 years, 20, whatever, they, however long they were under your control and authority. And they weren't under your control because they made decisions you didn't like. So you couldn't control shit. You thought you could. You can only control yourself. Okay? You. All right? And so with that, if we do not become spiritually aware ourselves, if we do not heal our childhood wounds, this is how generation curses go from one generation to the next, to the next, to the next. This is how this happens. Because my parents didn't heal their childhood wounds. Their parents didn't heal their childhood wounds. Their parents didn't, my grandparents didn't heal their childhood wounds. My great grandparents, their grandparents didn't heal their childhood wounds, right? And so on and so forth, right? That's how generational curses and generational karmic situations continue. I've mentioned in past, I've mentioned this guy, uh, Nico, 
right? I remember watching a documentary. He's a serial killer. I remember watching Nico. His face is all tatted. There's nothing wrong with tattoos. I'll definitely be getting some um, specifically to who I am and not with anyone's name. That is the dumbest fucking thing ever. Do not ever get someone's name fucking tattooed on you. Don't do that. I don't care who they are to you. Don't ever do that. Okay? Um, and the simple reason is people change. It's very, very simple. I dated a woman who had her ex-husband or ex-man's name on her tattooed on her ankle, around her ankle, right? I didn't like that. We went to a tattoo shop. She turned it into a rose. Okay? And she had been in a 10-year relationship with someone who was in the Navy. I'm not dating somebody with some, some other fucker's name on their body. Really? Get the fuck out of here. You better bleach that shit out or something. I'm not dating you with Richard on your fucking chest. What the fuck? Okay, so that ain't happening. <laughs> All right, so, um, yeah. Your spiritual walk determines the example that you set for your children. And that sounds like a, an extremely simplistic thing. Don't tell your children to do as you say and not as you do. Don't tell your children that. Mothers, fathers, don't tell your children that. Because if you do, what's going to end up happening is they're going to end up being unalive spiritually or you're going to put them in danger naturally, physically. Okay? Because you're going to allow them to go to places that because your intuition is turned off, you don't know that they should not go. So, you don't know. Don't let her go to that sleepover because they're actually going to sneak out to a party. She's going to end up being R-A-P-E-D'd. And you're not going to know where the fuck she is in the morning at 6 o'clock when you wake up. What are you going to do? Your intuition needs to be turned on so you know you're not going to that party. Okay? You can get mad all you want to. I don't care. You can do something else, but you're not going there. Why? Because my intuition, my third eye, is turned on, bitch. It's like fucking my, like my natural eyes. They're as wide as these. You see that? <laughs> my third eye, wide as those. Okay? And ten times as powerful. Okay? So, yeah, they can do something else. Go somewhere else. During the daytime, they can, because, yeah, yeah, you can't trust them to, mm -mm. no. You have to understand the nature of a child, okay? You have to understand that, okay? And if they are not spiritually awakened, you can start working on this from your child from the womb, okay? You can start playing 369 frequency for your child in the womb, 444-555-333. You can start playing these frequencies while they are still in the process of being physically matured within the womb. You can play these things. You can sow into your child, men, especially men, while they're still in the womb. You can do that. Okay? Then when they're birthed, they can't obviously physically speak and express this to you, but oh, trust me. Hmm. Spirit is, is, has the power to penetrate more than water okay more than water and so ask yourself this question today or whenever you listen to this okay what am I doing and maybe you don't have children you can help the next generation I mentioned someone in the previous video Tara Greenstead who was unalived in South Carolina that is a case that calls out to me it speaks to me Right? She was a either a star seed or a light worker or something. I just just from knowing her story. Okay? Just from knowing her story. She didn't have kids. She wasn't married yet, unfortunately. She didn't get to get that journey. Right? And whatever small hick fucking town she's she was she was unalived in, those motherfuckers sitting on their ass. The fucking case still ain't solved, bitch. Still ain't solved. Okay? Again, these are the things. It's all about justice. I'm in every single, every way. It doesn't matter what it is. The fucking banking system. 
I'm all about justice. The legal system is not justice system. I'm all about justice, right? In, in schools, it doesn't matter. I'm on the job. I'm all about justice. I'm all about fairness, right? I'm all about anti-racism. I'm all about that. I'm never joining an organization, again, that flaunts themselves by supporting a specific race. I'm not going to do it. NAACP don't call me ever. I don't care where I end up. I don't care what Most High does with this life that I'm leading, what platform he puts me on. Don't call me because I ain't helping your ass. Okay? Black entrepreneurs of America, don't call me. I ain't supporting your ass. Why? Because you're racist. There's no need for me to distinguish my organization as a race. No. Okay? No. All right? And so, um, when, when we're taking a look at ourselves and the life that we are leading, again, whether you have kids or not today, if that's your desire, I certainly hope, and, and, and declare that it be so, you know, as you go along your life and you are paying attention to the sights, the sounds, the synchronicities of your life, and you are meditating, you are in communion with Most High, Divine Spirit, Deity, Yahweh, you are, you are in alignment, right? You are doing your spiritual work. It will happen if that's a desire of yours. It doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter, okay? If that's a desire of yours. Same thing with marriage. Same thing with, with anything. Same thing, right? If you are faithful to walk your course, regardless of what anyone else is doing, and here's the thing, regardless of what anyone else is doing, so the moment someone says, hmm, uh, I don't know about that, if you know within your heart that that is what Most High is leading you to do, bounce from them. Leave them, okay? Leave them. Because if you don't, they're going to become a deterrent, and they're going to get you off your game. And when they get you off your game, you won't have this. And we all like a winning streak, okay? We all like a winning, winning streak, right? Um, and so, that's what I got from that dream. The next generation needs to be hearing what I'm saying. And not just me, but what other Whatever you want to call us, I don't even know. I don't even have a title for myself. I don't have a, a whatever for myself, right? If I'm ever to be introduced, you can just say, I don't know, here's Nehru. You could just say, I don't know, you don't need a title. You don't need to give me a title. I don't need that, okay? All right, that's restricting anyway, okay? So, um, yeah, ask yourself that question. What am I doing today to enlighten the next generation. What am I doing? Hmm? What am I doing? A lot of my videos I don't make available to kids, you know, when I'm going and I'm posting because of the profanity. Okay. Um, however, I'm certain that there will be a time when I will have that opportunity. One of the reasons why I need to be free personally, right? The Sagittarius sun and uh, Pisces ascendant sign. The reason why I need to be free, okay, and why I'm okay walking alone because I'm the lion, right? And my strength is is mighty, okay. But I need to be free, so that when Most High says it's time to go to St. Jude and spend three weeks up there with the kids. I can do that. I don't have to clock out. I don't have to take PTO. I don't have to take vacation time. I don't have to wait for approval for some boss who wants to who wants to slave drive me and rule my time and and tell me how much money I can make and all I don't know. That's not the system for this guy. Not this guy. Okay? And again, I'm just speaking for myself. I'm speaking for myself. Okay? That's not the system for me. So, What are we doing to sow into the next generation? And by the way, that St. Jude's thing, that is, that's a real thing that's going to happen. I will be spending weeks up there helping those children 
sowing into them, healing them, my energy, my unconditional love, just spending time with those children that need strength, spiritual strength, okay? And encouragement, they need, they need peace within themselves because they're spiritually mature beings. So if you connect to them this way, they will understand you. They will connect with you, okay? Most parents never, ever, ever take the time out to connect with their children on a spiritual level. I attempted to do this with my daughter, Alexis. I mentioned her name because she's a grown ass woman, okay? Um, so, and you don't know her last name, so it doesn't matter. So, and it's not the, mine, so it doesn't. <laughs> so, anyway, um, she's not connected to me on social media. Okay. Uh, so, um, I attempted, when we connected, I didn't meet her until she was almost into her teen years. Okay, she was, I believe, 11 when I met her. She was about to be 12. 11s, 11s, e that's... I'm not a life path 11, I'm a life path 7, but it's, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, I met her when she was 11, okay? I didn't know she ex existed, I really didn't. Um, and so, but her mother was my first girlfriend in high school, okay? And so, when I met her, even though she was 11 already, I attempted to connect her then as I knew how. Back then, I was still going to the Rock of Central Florida in Sanford, Florida. And I was there again for 20 years, right? From 03, from, no, from 02 to 22. Yes, 02 to 22, okay? That's an 11, 2-2, two, two. look at that, 11-11. I don't make this stuff up, it just happens. It just happens. Transplant on 7717. I don't make this shit up. It just happens. Okay? So, and again, I'm not the only one. Every earth angel, every light worker, every, we all have the opportunity to have our life marked by these amazing and, yes, challenging at times, events. But ultimately, you come out on top. So I went through dialysis for four and a half years. However, the testimony is the three years, three weeks leading up to, three years, three weeks leading up to the call that came at the dialysis center, at the next stage dialysis center that I was at, okay? Because for three weeks, 21 days, I said, I don't need dialysis, I'm just here to socialize, okay? And I would say it whenever, all day, whenever. For three weeks, 7-6, the phone rang of 17 Okay. Flew up to Pittsburgh, University of Pitt campus at the VA Transplant Hospital, 7717 transplant. Somewhere between three and four o'clock in the morning. That's no coincidence. Somewhere between three and four o'clock in the morning. Yes. That hour. That unique hour right there. Yeah. And I didn't I didn't have a choice on when what time it was done, and I only know the time because I look at my medical record. That's the only time I know of when the procedure was done. That's the only, that's the only way I know. So I know the time. All right? So your life is marked by unique and amazing events. Let's help the next generation experience that even more so. Let's help them come out walking on water. Let's help them be that when they come out don't don't have them you know there's something to be said about teaching your children about hard work okay however i do not believe that if i'm a billionaire i should give all my money away and have my kids work for a living from the ground up i don't believe that because that's not sowing into the next generation right that's not leaving something for my children and my children's children that's not what that does bill gates Okay, that's not what that does. Melissa Gates or whatever his wife's name is, I don't even know because I don't care. Um, whatever that is, 
right? That is not how you sow into the next generation, buddy. No, that is not how you start them off better than you started out. They don't need to start out where you started out. The baton is passed to the individual that needs to run the next leg of the race. OK, it's not you don't hold the baton and run past the one who you need to hand the baton off to because you want to do it yourself or you throw the baton away because you don't want to hand it off to them. No, you go get it. You got to start where I started from. Go back there to the start line. I'm not handing it to you. What? Get the fuck out of my relay. Really? Come on. All right. So what are you doing? What are we doing? What am I doing? To help the next generation from birth be better than I am. Better than we started out. Okay? Children of baby boomers. Better than we started out. What are we doing? Spiritually, what are we doing? I'm not talking about trying to tell them what kind of job they need to get and all that. I'm Spiritually, all that stuff is not up to you. Parents. It's not your job to tell your child what their occupation is going to be. Get the fuck out of their life. That's not your job. Most High has divinely appointed them to do specific works here. They could be two years old. They have a specific work here every day. Don't try to tell them they need to be something just because it pays a lot of money. Because guess what you're going to end up doing? They're going to end up pitched at you. They will dismiss you because they stuck to an occupation that they ended up being miserable in. So then what are you going to do about your disgruntled relationship with your son or daughter who's been on a job for 20 years or an occupation for 20 years because you told them to be a lawyer and they really wanted to be a social worker? But they went to school, went into debt to be a lawyer. Okay? And now they don't even like the job. They treat their clients bad because they really didn't want to do that. They wanted to be a musician. They wanted to travel around the world, okay? You didn't want them to do that because you didn't believe in them. Shame on you. Shame on you. Okay? Um, so, what are you doing? Again, what am I doing? To help the next generation. Okay? Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm glad to be out today. It's warm enough. <laughs> warm enough and uh, yeah continue to be encouraged and know that there is a better way and there is a right seed a righteous seed that is sown into our children from birth we are responsible for them for a short period of time okay a short period of time not a lifetime Thank you so much for tuning in. My name's Nehru. You've been tuned in to The Encourager. Talk soon.